experiment emission. So probably that's a bit too big right now for our company. We just started. So. Um, but yeah, with Whisper, we want to, we want to, or actually, we have a, a background in theater, most of us, uh, in, in performance design. Uh, and we found that we have a different outlook on games than most of the people we talk to in game development. Uh, so I'm trying to see all right, what is it that makes us different, what sets us apart, uh, what is it that, we're, that we are thinking differently about than, than other people. Uh, so I just heard a previous speaker say that he wants to make people think, um, make people think about what another person might feel. And that's actually very close to what we want to do as well. Um, and we've got some ideas on that, so I hope this might be helpful. Uh, so yeah, I, I studied the uh, Master of Arts and Performance Design. It was at the Yearbook School of the Arts. It no longer exists. This uh, this master, but you know, it was fun while it lasted. There are research in interactive storytelling. Uh, I made interactive theater, and uh, I'm, right now I'm the creative director at Wispire. Um, Uh, with Whisper, we're currently working on Herald. Uh, Herald is a narrative-driven adventure game. Uh, it's currently in production. There's a demo available. It's on Kickstarter, so please back us. Uh, we won the Indie Prize for Best Narrative at Casual Connect. So, well, I think maybe we're doing something right. I hope, certainly hope so. Uh, we're featured on a number of websites, such as Polygon, Kill Screen, Examinar. We hope to catch a few more in the coming days as our Kickstarter comes closer to its end. All right, so the talk. Why Harold injects politics into its fiction? I was inspired by the two to, to make this talk, to write this talk, uh, when I saw this tweet by Total Biscuit. Um, and he says, injecting politics into fiction is naturally exclusive, exclusionary and regressive. Uh, well, I couldn't disagree more. And furthermore, I think it's not even possible to keep politics out of fiction. It's a complete fantasy that you can make something without putting your own politics in there. Uh, so not only think, do I think he's wrong, I also think he's being hypocritical. Because I think the politics he's talking about are the politics that he doesn't like. And that in itself is a political statement. Uh, I could have also called this talk, if my clicker will work. There we are. Uh, how some games inject politics into their players, but Harold doesn't. And I hope it will become clear what I mean by that. Uh, or, why Harold is not Call of Duty. Uh, which is not to say that Call of Duty isn't politics, because Call of Duty is completely filled with politics. It's, it's, it's about, it's nothing but politics, basically. Uh, so let's have a look at that. In theatrical terms, because that is after all my background, uh, Advanced Warfare is an Aristotelian Greek tragedy. And Harold is Brechtian epic theater. Now, I don't expect you to know what all that means, so I'm going to explain it. Uh, Aristotle is first up. Aristotle was a, a, a Greek philosopher, and he wrote Poetics. And Poetics is still a defining uh, work on how to create narrative, how to create stories. It's, it's, in one of, it's the, earliest, the earliest book on dramaturgy. And uh, it's, still, it's still relevant, as I hope to show. Um, and the goal, according to Aristotle, was to provoke and destroy in the audience an undesirable thought or emotion through catharsis. Catharsis you're probably familiar with. Catharsis is at the end of the story, is feeling all right, we've closed it, it's the end. The, the, the emotions that the story brought up are now gone. Uh, they, they've been purged from the audience. Uh, and this wasn't this goal of uh, of Aristotle. Uh, that was that he didn't just he didn't just want to do that for for the hell of it. Uh, Plato, another Greek philosopher, had said theater is worth nothing because theater is all about feelings and emotions, and we should be using our minds because we're Greeks and we're intelligent. We should be using our thoughts, not our emotions. And Aristotle said no, but we can use theater to make people do what we want. And that may also have been why Plato didn't like it, but there we are. So, how does Aristotle do that? How does Aristotle influence people uh, using his system of tragedy? Um, and the tragedy is one of the, one of the, 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 
the genres, the genres comedy, but we've lost most of most of the parts that are <coughs> on, uh, on uh, comedy are lost to us. To us. Uh, but the tragedy has a certain narrative structure. Uh, first, you need a tragic hero, uh, someone who's noble, high birth, high status, important person. Uh, then that person needs a flaw, and this flaw is the, the key of the play, the key of the of, of the tragedy. Um, it is what the tragedy is going to tell us. This is a bad thing, but. Before, we t before it tells us that, it first tells us, all right, but this is also a really good thing. That's because it is also the reason why this character is where he is today. And then there is a reversal, which shows why the flaw is actually a bad thing. And finally, there is uh, an anachoresis, and anachoresis means that the, the hero sees, oh, damn it, so I was wrong all along. Oh, the world is really not the way I thought it was. Uh, and, because of the connection the audience has to the character, the audience will see it that way as well. That's how the theory goes. Uh, and finally, the hero is destroyed in a catastrophe. Either he dies, everyone around him dies, something like that. Yes, it has to end very badly for whoever broke this rule, <laughs> who broke it, who, who used this Hamar chef, who used this flaw. And all that leads to the catharsis, which is the goal of Aristotle in here. It's a purge of the negative emotion, and it restores the balance in society, as he saw. Uh, they want they have, you know, people thinking in certain ways, uh, for instance, thinking that uh, tyranny is good, whereas uh, uh, Greeks, the, the cities in Greece were uh, democracies, with a small elite being the only democratic part, but still democracies. <laughs> so. <laughs> Purging these, these thoughts and emotions that the state didn't want was a goal of, tra of, the, of the tragedy. Uh, usually done through the, 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 the plays themselves, you know, they have to be paid as well, just as they are now, they are expensive. Uh, so the state or the elite of the city would pay for it, and this is what they would want in, in return. Alright, let's, uh, let's go through the, the words because they're a bit difficult sometimes. Uh, with an example, Hamlet. Hamlet is also a tragedy. Hamlet follows the mold of, this, of, the, of the traditional tragedy. It, it, it differs from the Greek in a certain ways, but not in this. This is exactly the same. So you have Hamlet, who is the prince of Denmark. He's a good guy, and he's a high-status guy, uh, because he's a prince. Um, Hamlet is filled with indecision throughout the play, and that indecision that means that when he has a chance to right all the wrongs, namely his father has been killed by his uncle, he has the chance to kill his uncle and restore himself to the throne and restore the monarchy. Um, but he misses his chance because his uncle is praying and he doesn't want to kill a man who's praying. Uh, and then afterwards he decides to try to kill him anyway and he kills the wrong person. Ah, yeah. <sighs> tragedy. So, um, the anachronisis of, the, of, this, of this is uh, when Hamlet realizes that Claudius has him beat, that uh, he has been poisoned at that point and stabbed and he's almost dying, and then he's told, all right, uh, you thought you were playing in a sword fight, uh, you know, a mock sword fight, but actually you were, part of, you were being murdered. Uh, so that's for him, the, you know, the reality, oh damn, I should have killed him when I had a chance. <laughs> uh, my indecision is, has undone me. Um, and the catastrophe, well, if you know Hamlet, at the end of the play, there are like two people still alive, everyone else is dead, <laughs> all the characters are dead. So that's a catastrophe. Um, come on, yeah, here we are. Alright, so let's see how, that, how Call of Duty fares in this, in this Thing. There will be some spoilers. Uh, who here has played Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, the campaign? One person, no? two persons. I was hoping for more. Oh well. <laughs> um, Alright, so uh, Call of Duty, uh, the first we need a tragic hero, and uh, we need a, a noble hero of high status. Uh, you might think it's the player character, but the player character is basically a camera with a gun taped to it, and he doesn't do very much else. He says like three words in the entire game, he has no character progression or anything. So it's definitely not him. Um, but you know, it's probably the 
the guy who spent the most money on it. You can actually say, you know, what actor they spend money on for a game because, you know, they use actors for games. Um, and this is Jonathan Irons. He's introduced to us as uh, the good guy. He's, uh, he's saving the world from international terrorism. He's, uh, he's very effective at it. So he's a tragic hero. Um, he gets things done. That's, his, that's what he does. He says, I'm, I'm more effective than the government. Or my company is so strong and we've, we've got we're an army and we're stronger than any other army. Uh, and the, the games, is, is, you know, the first missions are all about you're going in places and saving hostages and rescuing people and doing, you know, fighting a good fight and, and everything that the United States especially are anxious about in the world today, international terrorism. Um, so that's, that's, but that's also his flaw, of course, as we already know, uh, but in the game you're not told that yet. He's really presented as a good guy and if you... If you look at YouTube, you actually see usually at least one or two people saying, you know, I think I think Jonathan Irons was right. Is it bad if I believe in this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so they're really good at, uh, at, at promoting him, but perhaps a, little, a bit less less good at, at bringing him down again. Uh, all right, so this this this, this good guy uh, needs to have a tragic flaw, and the tragic flaw is that he uh, he takes getting things done a little too far. And he decides that all politicians in the world are evil, that the politicians are the evil of the world itself because they don't get things done. So he decides to remove all of them and he declares war on the world. A bit excessive, but there you are. Um, that's a turnaround. Suddenly he's the bad guy and, and, and Call of Duty really isn't, isn't subtle about this. It's just, alright, now he's the bad guy and you've got to fight him. Now you're, you're with the United States Army rather than with his corporation that you work for. Um, then there is a, as the plot moves forward, and of course he's got a super weapon and he's going to kill everyone and you have to stop him, etc, etc. Um, but the, then there has to be, according to our, our, our group tragedy, there is the, the place where, where the, the hero is, is realizes that he is losing, that, he, that what he's done is wrong. And Alphonse Ward doesn't actually do that. And, and now I could say this is, uh, as Aristotle said, because it's not a very good tragedy. <laughs> he said that, uh, Aristotle wrote uh, about a number of Greek plays at the time. He said, all right, these plays don't have that moment of realization. That's, that makes them inferior to the other ones. Uh, but actually, Alphonse Square does try in the form of Gideon, who is uh, a character who is the squad leader of your, your, your player character, uh, and who leads you around the world and, and basically says, Jonathan Irons, you, you've made everything worse. You're, you're horrible. This has been tried before and it failed. So he's basically the voice here saying, look, it's, it was dumb. Your, your, flaw, your flaw sucks. <laughs> the catastrophe, well, this is the, the, one of the final scenes of, of, of the game. There's, you know, that's Jonathan Irons falling to his death with explosions everywhere. The world at this point is in, embroiled in a huge war and, and, and there's missiles flying everywhere. I don't think you can get a bigger catastrophe, catastrophe so I don't think that needs much more. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <coughs> so the catharsis that, it's, that, it's, that this is meant to provoke, I think. Um, tyrants are bad. The tyrants is a tyrant. He's bad. Democracy is good, at least better than, than the other thing. Uh, and people who try to overthrow democracy are also bad, and they end up badly. <laughs> This is all political, by the way. <laughs> These may be very, very obvious to us, but they are political messages. Um, so, yeah. I'm not saying it's a good tragedy, but it is a tragedy. <laughs> uh, now, what's a Brecht? Because, I said, you know, uh, I said uh, this is a, an, an Aristotelian tragedy and we are a Brechtian epic theater. Uh, well, uh, a Brecht is a, a famous 20th century playwright and theater director. Uh, he made political theater. theater. He was a Marxist. Uh, that means he wanted to change society. He wasn't shy about that. He, uh, uh, that, that was his goal, as were most Marxist theater makers. Uh, and he was not fond of Aristotle because of, well, hopefully clear by now, because Aristotle is, is manipulating people to feel in a certain way. He wants people to think, not feel. Um, so yeah, he wants to, to, to force people out of that empathic connection, force them to not just feel what that character, what your character, or what Jonathan Arnold is feeling, but he wants to think about it. 
uh, and go on a conscious level rather than just staying in the unconscious. And to do that, he, he developed the Verfremdungs effect in theater. And Verfremdungs effect is a, is, is, is a, is a very famous uh, strategy that's been used, uh, as, especially in the mid, mid 20th century, a lot. Um, and it's basically to say, you know, all right, well, why am I giving this presentation? Like, do you know? Do you know what, what's going on here? This is this this whole story is absurd. All right, it forces you out of the story and it makes you think, okay, what's going on here? Uh, it's just alienation. It, it it takes you out of it. That's for friend Um And it, it, yeah, the, the the whole point of that is to make people think. So going back to what the previous speaker said, I hope that 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 helps. <laughs> um, so that's that's Aristotle. He wants to, to provoke emotions by getting you engaged in the story, whereas Brecht wants to make you conscious of our social and political reality. He wants to take you out of the story for a moment. Um, but games already don't have a, really have a fourth wall. Uh, there's, there's already the game can make you do stuff. It asks you for input. Uh, that means the fourth wall is already down, in a way. Uh, you're already involved, you're already making decisions. Uh, so advanced warfare is, is treating the game narrative the way a movie does. It's just, you know, uh, this is happening. So go shoot stuff so it can actually happen. But, you know, you don't have any influence, of course. Uh, whereas Brecht is actually, in, in the 1930s, he's making theater in a way that a video game works with narrative. He's asking, all right, what would you want to do? What's the next step? Where are we going? Uh, and, well, Working on that, from that, we, we, we came to Harold. Uh, and with Harold, we also want to provoke thought. We, want you to, we don't want you to just sit there and, and, and be taken on a story. We want you to sit back, all right, what's going on here? What's, what, are we, what are we doing? Um, so it's, uh, Harold is, is an, uh, our exploration of multicultural society because we think it's a very important issue in, in, uh, in the world today. Um, and we set the story of Harold in the 19th century because that is the time when, when all this, uh, when the multicultural society really restarted. Uh, people were shipped all over the globe, uh, so that's, that's when, it all, when it all began. Um, it's, it's, uh, the game explores themes of race, gender, and sexuality. Uh, and we want this to be thought provoking. We want you to think about what's, what society's view on this, what's my view on this. Uh, I'll show a video, uh, I believe so. Warfare, emerging historical emotions, the goal of Harold, fitted consciously, 
think about and engage with a social and political reality, the themes that I just mentioned. All right, so let's see uh, if that's working on our demo. This is a, a Let's Play. Uh, I hope it's safe. What's wrong with the smooth stuff? I haven't created a talk today. I didn't know the way to that hand. Alright, so the, the goal was to find a, a hidden gun. Uh, she's found it, this guy has, has it in his hands, and she's asking, alright, why? what are you doing with that gun? Um, uh, he is an officer, and officers are usually allowed to have guns, but the captain has said, no, you're not allowed to have a gun, and that's what this thing is about. I changed my mind, yo, who fucking says that? I might change my mind. Why don't you shoot yourself in at a cold photo that I need to turn it on? I feel like you shoot yourself in a higher cell. I, I, I want to say one or two. Um, I feel like I need to turn it on. I don't want to meddle, but I just want to take that gun back to the weapons uh, cache. So you're an errand boy. So you're an errand boy now. You started already. Already the last one. Well, I won't help you. It's not fair to him. Yo, you want a fucking tussle? I know the merchant made me can't go from cover to cover. He clearly says that any officer left to bear arms. Every officer does it. I'm an officer, so why do I get that same type of rights on the hair? I'll go with the hair. Do it. I asked him a little why the gun was so important to him, but it, it secretly was his child. I, I asked him a little why the captain has banned guns. He agreed with little bit that it was unfair. Well, it is, it is your right. I won't lie. But I'm gonna ask. I, why has he banned guns? I even asked the captain why he banned guns. Supposed to be about old and outdated policies. But honestly, Captain, I don't really care about the gun. I just want the captain to know that if Bunswick gives up the, his rights, it doesn't all matter me that I give up mine as well. I'm just getting angry. Those fucking people eyebrows. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I'm always expected to do as, as the white man does. I'm never trusted to make my own decisions. Sometimes I feel like I'm an officer and nothing but me. Ah, oh, shit, I can't. Oh, do I? Hmm. I'm not here for it.
More questions? Um, what's your process in coming up with uh, dilemmas for the player to, to consider like this? Was it a really uh, 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 targeted choice to, to try and cause that in players? Or? Did you just come up with it and see Yeah, it? no, it, it's it's really it is a process finding those finding those tension fields. Um, but you can take a lot of inspiration from reality. What are people fighting about? What ideas? Uh, or what in, in this case, what in history were they fighting about? What were the, the ideas that were in play? Uh, and then you can have like this character believes this theory or this uh, ideology. This character has that ideology, and the third character has another ideology. Uh, and as the player, you can sort of find your way in between and see where you end up. Uh, so that's kind of the idea we take from that. We try to find different perspectives and offer them. And as a player, you can sort of choose between them. Yes. So there's got to be emotion somewhere in there. I mean, even the, the person playing on the video seemed more than just intellectually... Oh, no, there definitely, there definitely is emotion involved. Uh, it's not that we don't want you to be emotionally involved, uh, but it is that we want you to also take a step out of that subconscious level uh, and go into your conscious thinking, all right, what am I doing, what's going on? Uh, it's also, uh, um, just not to be misunderstood, Brecht in theater can also be comedy and fun and everything. It's not about, you know, all right, now we're going to be something really serious and think all the time. <laughs> that was uh, one more question. Yes, sir. Um, I was wondering what kind of pacing did you choose for the game and how do you make sure that uh, the player uh, keeps being engaged uh, on a longer period? Yeah, uh, we deliberately t uh, chosen for somewhat slower pacing. We don't want to rush because we want people to have these moments. Now, oh, what am I going to do? Um, the game is playable quite quickly, so you can, if you want to play through it swiftly, you can. Uh, but we hope through our content to uh, lure people into thinking about stuff and, and, and exploring and, and making decisions and all that. All right, thank you. That was really